This is the 2018 MEXT English paper for research students. Let's get started. Alice had to blank how to solve her financial problems. I would say B, figure out. To figure out means to find the solution to or to understand. Number two, we should emphasize that our skin cream contains only natural blank. D, natural ingredients. Number three, as my son and I journeyed down the path to our car, I was blank aware of the dangers of the icy path. The answer is C, I was keenly aware. If you have a smartphone, you can check in well blank long before you reach the airport. A C, you can check in well in advance. In advance means early. With the blank of genetic engineering, the time required for the evolution of new species may literally collapse. Uh, I would say A, advent. Advent is another word for arrival or coming. So with the arrival of genetic engineering, it is important to know whether there is a cancellation charge in order to blank heavy penalties. In order to be avoid. Avoid is a very basic word, so you should already know what it means. The boy was caught stealing food from the store, but seeing his blank, the store owner decided not to call the police. Uh, D. Seeing his remorse. Remorse is the feeling of being sorry for what you have done. You should protect your wireless network with an encryption or password to blank unauthorized access. A. To deter. Uh, to deter means to prevent, so you want to prevent unauthorized access. Using this video conference system, our students can get answers from experts who, because of time and distance, would otherwise be blank. I would say B, inaccessible. Inaccessible is the antonym of accessible. Because of the relative pronoun who here, the adjective that goes into these brackets must be a modifier of the noun experts here. In this context, these experts are inaccessible because they live far away. In this brainstorming session, you are encouraged to share your ideas with other participants. The chairperson is the leader and blank of the session. I would say C, facilitator. The verb to facilitate is to help, so the chairperson should help the brainstorming session. Ten days blank the disaster. The local government released a preliminary report on the situation uh, 10 days after the disaster. The foliage emerges purple in the spring, but blank green as the season progresses. Turns green, the verb to turn, followed by a color, means that something changes into that color. So turn green means to become green. Blank you be unable to attend the meeting. Please let us know by tomorrow, okay? Uh, C. Should you be unable to attend the meeting? The modal verb should can express a possible scenario. So you can say if you should be unable to. But you can also omit the conjunction if and move the modal verb should to the front of the sentence, as in, should you be unable to? Blank you are leaving so early. It's only six o'clock. Have dinner with us. B. How come? How come means why. And after how come, there's no subject inversion, so you can't say how come are you leaving, and instead you must always say how come you are. The professor blank as a founder of modern chemistry in this country and her research and theories change the way we think about ourselves. C. 
the professor is referred to as a founder, to refer to someone as something is to call someone something. And this sentence is in the passive voice, so you need the verb is. All sea salts are produced in shallow beds. Blank salt is deposited by the ebbing tide, and most of the remaining moisture is evaporated by sun and wind. I would say B, where the noun shallow beds is described by the relative clause headed by where, and this relative pronoun where can be replaced by in which. So salt is deposited by the ebbing tide in shallow beds, and relative pronouns like where and when are different from the other relative pronouns like who and which, because the relative pronouns like who and which replace subjects or objects, whereas the relative pronouns where and when replace modifiers or adjuncts. So the relative pronouns where and when must be replaceable by the combination preposition plus which. So in this case, shallow beds in which salt is deposited by the ebbing tide. This is because if you want to put the noun phrase shallow beds back into the relative clause, you would say salt is deposited by the ebbing tide in shallow beds, because the noun phrase shallow beds is neither the subject nor the object of this clause, because the subject is salt and there is no object in this clause, because this clause is in the passive voice. So that was a slightly technical explanation, but I hope it made some sense. I think blank you to let him stay on here. Um, B, it's so generous of you to let him stay on here. So this is a special construction involving the dummy subject it and an infinitive clause. And in this construction, the subject is either indicated by for or of, and the preposition of is used when the adjective here is interpreted as a modifier of the subject, you, here. So it is you who are generous, whereas the preposition for cannot be used when the adjective here modifies the subject. So for example, you can say it is dangerous for you to swim here because it is the act of swimming that is dangerous, not the person, you. I expect you blank this assignment by next week. I expect you to remember to finish, uh, so D. So you need an infinitive clause after expect someone, so expect you to do, and the verb to remember can take either an infinitive clause or a gerund, like to remember to do and to remember doing. To remember to do means that there is something that you have to do in the future, whereas to remember doing means that you are recollecting something that you did in the past. Excuse me, I have a traveler's check. Is it possible to blank here? C. Have it cached. This grammar is like a blend of causative and passive. Have plus a noun plus a past participle means that the action denoted by the past participle is done to the noun in the middle. I say this is partly causative because the causative verb have here implies that someone else is going to cash the check for you and therefore you are not the one who is going to cash it. Switzerland has lots of mountains but they are now less densely equipped with skiers dormitories than blank. I would say D, those of France and Austria. So we are comparing mountains of Switzerland and mountains of France and Austria. And you can't use that in this case because the noun mountains is plural. You can only use that when the noun that is replaced 
is a singular noun. So you can say things like the population of China is larger than that of Japan because the noun population is a singular noun. In this section, we need to identify a grammatical mistake and then correct it. Number one, but the faces, it should be a face, not a faces. Because if it were plural, it would violate the number agreement here and here. Uh, the program is aimed at students who struggle to engagement. Uh, it should be struggle to engage because we say to struggle to do. To is not a preposition, so it can't be followed by a noun. It needs to be followed by the infinitive form of a verb. A researcher has been awarded one of science's highest honors for his work on needle-free vaccines. Professor Mark Kendall recently win, should be recently won, the past tense, because the word recently implies that this event took place in the past. If you stop to tie your shoes on a corner in Camden, New Jersey, there's a chance the city's police force can see exactly what you're doing. With surveillance cameras everywhere, the police are relying on technology to fight crime. And one tool in particular is exploding in popularity. Robot. I think it should be robots, because I assume there is more than one robot. A supermoon occurs when the moon becomes full on the same night as its perigee, which is the point in the moon's orbit when it is closest to Earth. The term is borrow. Uh, it should be the term is borrowed. You need a past participle form because this sentence is in the passive voice. It is not uncommon to come home after a long day at work or school and relax while reading an ebook or watching television. Lately, however, scientists have been cautioning against using light emitting devices before bed. Why? The light from our devices has a higher concentration of blue light to natural light. I think it should be than natural light because we are comparing two things. The market for wrist-worn fitness devices, known as wearables, is cooling. A narrative has emerged over the last few weeks that wearables will be soon died. Uh, the verb die cannot be used in the passive voice in English. So I guess it should be will soon die or will soon be dead. So in general, intransitive verbs cannot be used in the passive voice. So, for example, you cannot say, I was arrived. If you are experiencing despair or grief, get out of the house. Go for the walk. It should be go for a walk, because that's the phrase that we use. There is only one predictable thing about Paul Meta's day, it's unpredictability. Meta is a senior research scientist in the front lines of cybersecurity. I think it should be on the front lines, not in the front lines. Lines are usually one dimensional, so you cannot be in a line, whereas you can be on a line, if that makes sense. It wasn't all that long ago that classical music was fun. People went to concerts for a variety of reasons. To be moved emotionally, to be entertained, and as a social event, to name a few. Performances were a chance for artists and audiences to connect on a level unattainable in other media. But all of that changed in the 20th century when rules of concert etiquette began incorporating themselves over performances, uh, I think it should be into, not over, because we say incorporate a into 
B not incorporate A over B. Many of its idiosyncrasies can turn into traps even for the most blank speakers. Okay, uh, adequate, assuring, confident, intellectual. The previous sentence is about the fear of English grammar among non-native speakers of English. So I would say the most confident speakers. But some of the most binding rules in English are things the native speakers know but don't know they know. Blank, they use them every day. Uh, because, even though, however, only if, uh, be, even though. Things the native speakers know but don't know they know, even though they use them every day. When someone blank one out, it's like a magical little shock. Mentions, points, shows, tells. Uh, when someone points one out, uh, point out is the phrase. But if you mess with that order, blank, you'll sound like a maniac. At the most, by a nose, in the slightest, on end, uh, see, in the slightest. It's like even a little bit. You'll sound like a maniac. Mixing up the above phrase does feel inexplicably wrong, though blank can say why. Anybody, everybody, nobody, somebody, see, nobody, though nobody can say why. Learn the language in a non-English speaking country, however. Blank such secrets are taught in meticulous detail. And, but, or, whether, say, and, because none of the other options make sense. Many English grammar textbooks that are regularly used to teach English to non-native speakers usually blank the adjective order in the same way as this person's surprising illumination. Arrange for, fit into, go on, lay out, D, lay out. So in this context, to lay out something is to explain it in detail. So these textbooks explain the adjective order in detail. The fact is, a lot of English grammar rules only blank as a surprise to those who know them most intimately. So appear, come, occur, spring, only come as a surprise. The phrase is come as a surprise. Learning rules doesn't always work, however. This person also takes blank with the rules we think we know, but which don't actually hold true. Disagreement, issue, object, opposition. I think the phrase here is to take issue with. To take issue with is like to have a problem with or to disagree with. There are only 44 words that blank the rule. Admit, break, control, follow. Uh, I guess follow the rule. So, D. So, in this section, we have two long passages followed by some questions. So, let's look at the questions first. Number one, according to the new research, sugar-free drinks can A. Be as bad to your teeth as drinks containing sugar, possible. B. Good alternatives to sugar-rich drinks. C be more damaging than sugar-free foods, uh, possible. D, be ideal for your teeth, probably not. Let's find this new research. Sugar-free drinks and foods are as damaging to teeth as the ones that contain sugar. These drinks were found to have acidic additives and low pH levels, which are harmful to tooth enamel. This sounds like A is true. Number 2. According to the new research, sugar-free soft drinks A. Contain additives that are not found in soft drinks containing sugar B. Have low pH levels because they contain no sugar C. May be acidic because of their ingredients C. Sounds like what I have just read D. Are not known to be acidic and have low pH levels so this question can be answered by the portion that I just read. So the answer is C. Number three, plaque on the tooth surface is harmful because A. It is formed by sugar present in drinks and foods. B. 
it will turn into something that will erode teeth. C. It directly attacks the tooth's outer layer. D. It reduces the risk of dental decay. Uh, D is obviously wrong. If it reduces the risk, it is not harmful. So my initial guess is B. So let's find plaque. Ah, uh, there it is. The presence of sugar leads to tooth decay by forming plaque on the tooth surface and converting to acid. So plaque becomes acid. The acid in turn attacks teeth by dissolving the tooth enamel's outer layer. Therefore, acidic drinks can erode teeth in the same way. As I guessed, I think D is the answer because plaque turns into acid and acid erodes teeth. Number four, according to the new research, dental enamel was softened blank. A, by most drinks that are not acidic. B, mostly by non-sugary soft drinks. C, mostly by sugary drinks having low pH levels. D, by most of the soft drinks. So here's softening, in which dental enamel softening and tooth surface loss was measured after teeth were exposed to different drinks. Most of the drinks led to the softening of dental enamel. So that confirms D to be the answer. Number 5. A. There be less emphasis placed on product tests. B. Non-sugar products have detailed information on their labels. C. Consumers know that high acidity leads to dental decay. D. Consumers avoid sugar-rich products. My guess is B. Uh, has suggested labels that have detailed information should be present on sugar-free products, so consumers can assess them with regard to their tooth health. So that means B is the answer. Section 5, Part 2. Once again, let's check out the questions. Number 1. How are we most likely to translate the German word this into English? A. By using a famous quote. B. By using a phrase or sentence. C. By using exact single word equivalents. D. By using internal representations of ideas. Okay, so let's find this word. It is pretty easy to find words in one language that don't have exact single word equivalents in another. This in German is a famous example. It refers to a kind of malicious pleasure some people find in other people's misfortunes. But does the lack of an exact single word English equivalent mean that English speakers aren't able to experience that feeling themselves or recognize it in others? Surely not. I believe I just explained in English what this word means. So the passage explained this word's meaning by using a sentence. So B. Number 2. What do we know about speakers of the Dani language? A. They can differentiate basic colors as easily as English speakers. B. They can't physically distinguish multiple colors. C. They do not use the same word for green and blue. D. They name various colors whenever they see a new one. Let's find Dani. An experiment in the 1960s found that members of a New Guinea tribe, the Dani, whose language named only two colors, were just as good at matching a full spectrum of color chips as English speakers. So I think that's A. They can differentiate colors. Number 3. What is most likely to be one of the main arguments in the book by Franz Boas? A. When naming things, different languages draw slightly different distinctions, uh, likely. B. Some languages of the Yupik and Inuit peoples have a modest number of snow terms, uh, likely. C. The Yupik and Inuit peoples have an amazing number of words for snow, uh, likely, I've heard about this. D. The way of thinking is influenced by the number of color words in a language. Uh, possible but unlikely. So let's find this person, uh, Franz Boas. Boas was making a point that had nothing to do with numbers of words or their influence on thinking. 
It was about the way different languages draw slightly different distinctions when naming things. So that sounds like A. Number four, why is the misunderstanding of the number of words for snow in the languages of the Yupik and Inuit peoples so widespread? A. Because these languages have far more words for snow than English. Possible? Because it was introduced by the great anthropologist Franz Boas. C. Because it is repeatedly reported in various media. Uh, I think C is the answer. D. Because people come to know that English has plenty of words for snow as well. But years of exaggeration and embellishment led to a seductive myth but people with no knowledge of these languages repeat over and over in magazines and newspapers. So that sounds exactly like C. And the final question, number five, based on the information provided. Which is the following statement is true? This sentence is wrong. It should be which of the following statements is true. Once again, this is a clear indication that Whoever makes these tests does not proofread their sentences. A. Language and thought are indeed independent of each other. B. Most Yupik and Inuit languages have hundreds or thousands of words for snow. That sounds too many. C. There are some languages that have very few color name words. I think this was mentioned with respect to the Dani language. D. Thoughts in one language cannot usually be translated into another. This is false. C is the answer because this was clearly mentioned with respect to the Dani language in New Guinea. So this is the end of this exam paper. Let me know if you have any questions and see you next time.